Um, hey, Billy Stupid. So anyways, here we go. Billy, Billy Bet, Billy Stupid. All right. And I'm a longtime lady listener. I love your stand-up specials, and F is for Family is amazing. Thank you. Uh, nice work. Thank you. Thanks again. I'm 29, and I just moved away from Seattle to San Antonio with my Air Force pilot boyfriend. Oh, all right. Uh, well, how, does, how does that one go? Off we go into the wild blue yonder. This is my first time living away from home, and he's gone a lot for work. I thought it would be a good idea for us to get a dog to keep me sane. I love animals and was a part-time dog walker in Seattle. My boyfriend, however, has never owned a pet in his life and isn't hot on the idea of having a dog. He's from Iowa, and he believes livestock should live, shouldn't live indoors. Oh, Jesus. I've owned cats and dogs my entire life. In fact, I had to leave my 17-year-old cat behind in Seattle, and it broke my heart. Can you offer any persuasive words to help bring him around, or should I just drop it? Thanks for the laugh, and go fuck yourself. Um, how do you bring him around? Well, you, you can do what my wife did, and you foster, air quote, a rescue dog. That's what happens. You foster a rescue dog, which means, yeah, just have it for the weekend. And as the bit went in my act, I went from there's no fucking way I'm keeping this dog and in a 48-hour period went all the way to, oh, my God, this thing's going to die someday. How am I emotionally going to be able to handle this? Um, you could do that. Um, I don't listen. Well, this is what I would do. Either way, no matter how this works out, I would get a small dog. Okay? Small dogs, small problems. Okay? Small expenses. Small shits to pick up as your house breaking the fucking thing. Um, house training, whatever the fuck it is. It's not a horse bill. You don't ride the thing. Um, how would you do this? Well, it sounds like he doesn't want to do it. Why would he call it livestock? It's not livestock. It's a fucking pet. Um, I don't know. You know what it is? This is the thing. If you foster a dog, this is what's going to happen. So this guy grew up on a farm or he grew up in Iowa. This is the thing. When you fucking come home on a farm, a cow is not flipping out and excited to see you. Neither is a horse. They can do little things, but nobody gets excited like a fucking dog. You know what I mean? It's like uh, Dick Vitale. Oh, baby! He's a primetime player! Right? Every time you come home, your dog flips out like you just dunked the ball on a fast break and the other team called timeout. That's the way your dog fucking reacts. Now, I know from experiences when I was just a boy and I would walk to school and I used to feed this horse every day on the way. Bill, is this a Tom Sawyer movie? No, it isn't. This was my childhood. And I remember one time it wouldn't come over, so I walked away and I fucking, when I looked back, it was doing that walk or it was nodding its head and flipping out for whatever fucking reason. It was like playing hard to get. So I know that they can, I guess on some level, show a certain level of emotion. But like, um, I think maybe, um, I don't know what kind of dog. If you get a little dog that has a nice mushed up face, you know, um, maybe like one of those French bulldogs, something that snores and farts. Your, your boyfriend can find it funny. I have no idea. Uh, maybe a dog like that, but, uh, I, I find it hard to fucking believe unless he grew up on a farm and anybody who grew up on a fucking farm on a certain level. Like they, they got this cold bloodedness to them. You know what I mean? They've just seen too much. They've seen fucking animals slaughtered, you know? You know, like when they were a kid, like their dad goes, you want chicken for dinner? Is that what you want? Quit your crying. You want chicken for dinner? All right, you come out here. You come out of your right. Come on out. Which one's it going to be? Dad, I don't want chicken anymore. No, you said you want a chicken. Now pick one out. Boy, if you don't fucking, I'm going to fucking have you for dinner. If you're, All right, that one. Then he fucking just grabs it, puts it on the chopping block, and then hands that kid the fucking cleaver. Go on, do it. I said, do it! Right? They live through that at like the age of six. So they don't look at animals the way we do. And I got to be honest with you. I remember one time I saw this guy shoot a fucking cow because it was bullying the other fucking... It was shot a steer because it was bullying the other steer. They couldn't figure out why, the, you know, you know they, they, they'd come back, you know, the next morning and like two or three cows looked like they fucking... Somebody tried to extrapolate some fucking information from them, right? Is that the right word? I don't know. Um, that they got slapped around. You know, like they walked into a door and they couldn't figure, who the fuck's slapping the shit out of these steer? And it turned, they figured out which one it was, so they were like, all right, we got to kill this fucking thing, but here's the deal. We don't want the thing to be stressed before it's killed because that'll affect the taste of the meat. So what they do is they just sort of, oh, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, and they just sort of pen it in, and yeah, you know. 
how you doing? Doopy doopy doo. And then they just fucking take out a gun. Blam! They fucking kill it, right? And I was like, oh my God. So then they, the guy had like this fucking, this tractor. And they tied up the back things, the back of its legs. They tied up its back legs. And then they just lifted it up off the ground. Then they gutted the fucking thing. All the blood's pouring out, all the fucking entrails. And I'm just sitting there going, oh my God. I'm never eating meat again. This is fucking horrific, right? And then they, once they fucking chop the head and the legs off and they get, they get the fur, the hide off, and they started chopping it up, uh, I went from like, oh, my God, I'm never eating meat again to my mouth watering going, holy fuck. Look at all those steaks. And this guy was cutting them in like four-inch fucking slabs, like Fred Flintstone fucking steaks. And it's just like, dude, you could literally eat yourself to death and not get a third of the way through that fucking cow, cattle, or what a steer, whatever the fuck it is. Um, so I think the thing about it is, is if he grew up in Iowa anywhere near a farm, that's how they look at animals. They look at it like, you know, this is a food source. And uh, don't get too emotionally attached to it. Keep it outside. Do not give it a fucking name. And when it can't make you any more money, you give it the old fucking right there, Fred. So he might be a lost cause. You know what I mean? And as bad as that might be for you, I got to tell you, like the fact that he can wall off those feelings like that is great if you ever have an intruder. Because God help him when that guy, when the intruder gets those farm hands around him. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking throwing bales of hay since he was four years ago. Farm boy strength. Jesus Christ, that fucking, all those fucking, every offensive lineman for Nebraska just grew up fucking punching steer in the goddamn head. The fucking maniacs. So um, the fact that he grew up in Iowa it might be a lost cause. So I would just say try fostering a dog and try to just get, get one that is cool and chills. But if, you, if your boyfriend's active, maybe he wants something that's a little more athletic, but like, you know. You can have a dog that just wants to chill while you watch the fucking game. I mean, that's the best. That's why I love my dog. My dog is fucking shredded. It makes me want to work out. But then also, you know, it is down to take a nap any fucking time you want. It's not like those sheep herding fucking lunatic dogs that have like ADD. And if you don't give it a project, it starts fucking eating the door, you know. Uh, but anyways, good luck with that shit.